original engineer in micro and nanotechnology. Uh, he changed his career to be a full-time Access developer. He's a four times and counting Microsoft Access MVP and contributes to the Access community on various uh, Access forums and uh, with his own blog at um, thesmileycoder.com. I'm looking forward to talk to Anders Abram, the Smiley Coder. Hi. Um, first, can you give us a very quick overview how you got into contact with Microsoft Access and um, how um, how are you using Access today for your current work with it? Sure, I can do that. Originally, I came into contact during a completely different project and one of our clients wanted to have a small database to keep track of information. It was my first time using Access and I quickly realized how we could use that to how we could use that to keep both track of the data we wanted to keep track of, but also yeah. all the metadata of who changed what and what time, and the whole relational aspect of data that you don't get with Excel. Okay, yeah. And today, uh, we do our company does full-time access development on, I'd say, all sorts of projects. We do a lot in the finance sector, uh, but we also do um, tracking of of data, tracking of information like requirements, inspections, uh, how many cars do we have, what's the latest status on their repair, when was it last repaired. Basically every time you need to keep track of data and you have many users that all need to access the same data. Or when we want to interface with different systems, we might want to read, we have clients where we read information from their salary system and we want to combine that or enrich that with data from other systems so that we can get a full comprehensive uh, user interface and they might have very fancy applications that they've bought out of the box but they need some custom reports and that system they already have in place doesn't provide that for them and we use access because we can pull out the data and customize the report or even allow the users to customize the report filters okay understand. yes you you were talking about using VBA classes for access development. Can you give us a short overview what the main benefits of using classes in, instead of uh, the usual modules in, in VBA are? Having a class object will let you have intelligence on that class object. So if you have a class of, say, car, you can then have methods that act on the car, or you can have properties of the car that you access through your class. And that's, that's definitely one benefit of using classes. Uh, another is that you can have multiple instances running in your code at the same time. I have a progress form that I sometimes use in more than one place. And I want to have that, uh, or have more than one progress bar at the same time if it's a very complicated procedure. Um, so you can have, you can reuse that. Uh, sometimes I would even just reuse the standard form class so that I might have a form customer and the, the default is you open it once and it stays open but if you use access you can also have the same form open multiple times on the screen if you use the, the, the built-in class um, sometimes you want to have the ability to open one customer but at the same time look at another customer without having to close the first form you already have open yeah absolutely do you think beyond those technical aspects as uh, the multiple instances and uh, IntelliSense and stuff like that, do you think using classes kind of nudges you in, in the direction of writing more maintainable code just beyond the uh, plain technical aspects of, of encapsulation and stuff? Has it changed your code, the way you write code? There's definitely a part of my code that I feel is more plug and play by being in a class. I feel sometimes it's that code is easier to pull from one project and use in another project. Um, it, yeah. it doesn't specific to classes. You can do the same with modules, but I, I tend to feel that classes are uh, simpler to extract and 
Yeah, I, I fully agree. They, they, you can do the same with modules, but um, I think it comes quite naturally with classes and with modules you have to take care of that yourself, that you do not have too much dependencies on, on other objects. And I think classes kind of um, push you a little bit into that direction just by, by being encapsulated in, um, and they kind of encourage another way of thinking. It's just my yeah. thoughts yeah. on that. Yeah. Definitely, if you have instances where you want to use the same functionality more than one time in your project, if you want to have the same specific behavior in different forms, and you use that class, then you can reuse it in a different form, and that makes it more maintainable because your logic is in the class and not in the form. Yeah. Just beyond classes, what are key factors for you to say um, code is good quality and it is maintainable and, and reliable? Well, Particularly if you have really maintainable. Good, if you have really good code, I would say it doesn't require a lot of commenting. If you feel like you have to write a big blog of, of comments just to explain what your code is doing, I think it's a good idea to re-examine if you could do it in a, in a smarter way that's yeah. more obvious to whoever might be reading it. Um, good code is, is clean and concise and reusable. Um, I think good quality code is also code that you've tested a lot of times. Not, not as in you've tested it yourself in a project, but if you have code that you've used in a lot of projects, yeah. you start to get more confident that it can work in, in multiple scenarios because you've come across those edge cases where people are doing something completely unexpected and you fix that and you keep reiterating your code to look it over and make it better and better and more reliable in, in different scenarios or for different versions of access. Do you use any sort of automated testing like um, Paul showed in, in the last uh, talk of today? I will sometimes write basic uh, testing code, uh, not as advanced as anything Paul, Paul had. And it will usually be, uh, I don't use any other tools for it. I use the MSET tools uh, code review feature. Yeah. But, and that certainly helps with finding code that I no longer use or uh, variables that I don't use anymore. But I think sometimes... Do you, uh, uh, sorry, do you test the, the functionality of the code? That a uh, function returns the expected value? That it works in the way you were expecting when you wrote it? Well, I will usually test it right after writing it. I will uh, call it a couple of times with functions or variables that I know should return false or variables that I know would, call the, would cause the function to return true and make sure that that is, is as I expected. Or sometimes I will even try to throw garbage at the function just to see the function expects a, uh, or, or I have a, a text box that the user should write a number in. What's going to happen if the user writes a date or text or something completely different or he forgets to fill it out? Yeah. But that is a manual process. You that don't keep the code to, to throw junk at your, your functions and no. keep that around and, and execute that in an in a automated way. No. Oh, okay, I see. Thank you. I think there were good points in Paul's presentation yes. about having yes. that. Absolutely. Uh, okay, thank you very much, Anders, for the interview. You're welcome. Very interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.